somebody say praise the Lord tonight. Uh, somebody say praise the Lord tonight. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. Glad to see you tonight on Thursday night. Amen. Tonight is our midweek refuel. Amen. This is the time of week we come together as our midweek service to get fueled up for the rest of the week. How many knows we need that fuel this week? Amen. My Lord, it seems like uh, all hells come against us and all hells come against different people's families. Amen. But I curse the plan of the enemy. Amen. Come on, somebody. I said I curse the agenda. Amen. The plan of the enemy. Greater is he that's within me than he that's within this world. Amen. I appreciate the goodness of God. Amen. Do you love the Lord tonight with all your heart? Amen. I believe you do. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn to somebody beside you and say, it's good to see you tonight. Amen. Good to see every one of y'all tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Got some more coming on in. Amen. Amen. As you're seated, I have just a few announcements tonight. Uh, Sister Morgan asked me to give you, so I'm going to give you these announcements, please. Uh, if you have any questions after these, please see uh, Sister Morgan or myself. We'll be glad to fill you in what's going on. As you see in the back, we have a constructed prayer wall going on, and uh, we have these for sale. You can buy bricks for sale. Uh, buy a big brick for $5 or a small brick for two fifty. And uh, for info on that, see Sister Judy and Miss Leanne. That's to write your prayer request on what you're believing God for. It could be financial, personal, could be the government, could be whatever you want to pray for. We're going to buy those bricks and put them on the wall back there. And by our faith, amen, that's all we're doing is by our faith showing that we still serve a great God, amen, a good God that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask, amen. I'll go ahead and tell you, me and my wife have done bought two bricks. Uh, we bought a big one and a small one to go up there on the wall, so we'll be putting those up there soon. So I encourage each of you, please, if you have a need in your life, if you got a lost family member, I know you pray every day for them, but just pray a little bit more. Come on, somebody. I know you got a bad situation in your life. You want God to turn around. I want to encourage you, don't stop praying. Don't give up on God. Amen. I believe God is a turnaround kind of God tonight. Amen. And please get one of those bricks, see Sister Judy or Miss Leanne for those. Uh, this is regarding Sister Morgan. There's a women's conference uh, coming up July 21st through 23rd in Calhoun. And they'll be there doing a women's conference. All info is uh, Sister Morgan approved. So please see her for any details, any women that want to go. Our men, we had a conference we left for about a few months ago. And we had a great time in the Lord, a chance to get away and uh, really seek out our life and get right with the Lord. And how many knows every day is a battle? Every day we need some instructions, don't we? Come on, somebody. We need time alone with God. So all the women, I encourage you to go to that. Amen. Grace Upon Grace is tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Somebody say 5 o'clock. Grace Upon Grace tomorrow with Sister, amen, Sister Christy, amen, and Miss Ethel back there. So please, please, if you want to be a part of that, please come be with them. I've heard great things out of that that God has moved already upon. So I believe God for more, don't you? Amen. So tomorrow at 5 o'clock is Grace Upon Grace. But for now, we're going to jump into the service for Thursday night service. I'm looking forward to seeing the hand of God move, aren't you, family? Come on, somebody. If you love him, would you stand tonight? If you love him, praise him tonight. And uh, let's get our ushers to come forward, please. Amen, Brother Devin and Brother Sean. Would you help me tonight? Amen. Amen. Good to see you in the house of God tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Get your offering ready. Get your prayer ready. I know that God is able to move tonight like never before. Amen. I come excited tonight. How about you? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's begin to pray and ask God to have his way tonight. Can we? Help me pray. Our Heavenly Father, God, we come before you tonight, God, as humble as we know how. Father, I want to thank you, first of all, for waking us up this morning, God, putting fresh breath in our bodies, God, helping our heart, Lord, to tick throughout the day, God. God, it's your breath, God, it's not ours, but Lord, it's your breath in our lungs, God. And we thank you, Lord, for the ability, God, and the strength, Lord, just to make it one more day in this crazy, crazy world, God. But I'm glad you said, be not conformed to this world, Lord, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind Father this world is not our home God we're just pilgrims and strangers passing through Father I pray for every need tonight God from the smallest to the biggest Lord you're the oh you're the same yesterday today and forevermore God there's nothing impossible with you tonight Father come on family let's pray and touch heaven tonight God we love you we adore you God we want to seek your face tonight Lord God we cannot do nothing without your spirit tonight God God I pray you'd move on every request God every uns 
unspoken requests, God. All the things coming up for this house, Father, I pray you'd supply the need and bless it, God. Oh, I pray for the ones who can give and the ones who cannot give, Father. And God, we give you praise, honor, and glory in this house, God. Lord, bless the worship tonight, Father. Let it be a sweet smell and savor unto your nostrils, Lord. God, I pray for Pastor tonight, God, as he brings the word of God, Lord. I pray that we not be hearers only, but doers also. God, anoint us now, we pray, in the matchless name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen and Amen. As you give tonight, turn to somebody, high five them, say, It's good to see you tonight. Amen. Yes, Amen. Glory to God. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord tonight? Can we give one more hand clap of praise in the house tonight? Do you like this for me? Come on. One, two, well, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Did you come to praise the Lord tonight with all you got? Come on. It's Thursday night. Let's let loose and have God have his way. Amen. Sing this with me tonight. It's amazing, I am a friend, say, I'm a friend of God, I'm a friend of God, well, I'm a friend of God, he calls me friend, you believe that tonight, sing it out, yes, I'm a friend of God, oh, I'm a friend of God, yes, I am a friend of God, he calls me Testament how they held the old saints would go through their battles and they would come out victorious and most of them when they get done 
they would be called a friend of God. See, it's not how you go into a battle, but it's how you come out of the battle. I believe you have faith in God to take you to a battle. The same God that brought you to it will bring you through it. Come on, somebody. I, I like that. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The same God that brought you to it will bring you right through it. Tell somebody he's going to bring you through it tonight. Come on. Now, tell somebody he's going to bring you through it tonight. I believe that weeping may endure for a night. Hallelujah. But I said joy. <laughs> joy is going to come in the morning. Hallelujah. i got to write that down when I get home. He's going to bring me to it, and he'll bring me through it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let's do this song for Pastor tonight. Hallelujah. You got to hold on to God's unchanging hand, don't you? I got, he's a God that changeth not. Come on, somebody. Your friends may change. Your family may change. This crazy world may change. But I serve a good father who says, I change not. <laughs> he's a good God tonight. If you believe that, give him a good God praise, would you? Well, you've got to hold to God's unchanging hand. Got to hold to God's unchanging hand. Just build your hopes on things eternal, and just hold to God's unchanging hand. Sing it one more time. Well, you've got to hold to God's unchanging hand. Well, you've got to hold to God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah. Just build your hopes on things eternal. And hold to God's unchanging hand. is filled with swift transitions not on earth a move can stand just build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand will you help me say family you've got to hold unchanging hand I tell you gotta hold to God's unchanging hand just build your hopes on things eternal hallelujah and hold to God's unchanging hand I like this last verse now trust in him who will never leave you. You believe that? Oh, what so ever years may bring. Well, if by earthly friends forsake God, well, now still more closely to him cling. Because you got to hold God's unchanging hand. Yes, you do. Well, you've got to hold to God's unchanging hand. Just build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. You've got to be Thanks. You have a testimony tonight for the Lord. Oh, 
Navidad. Come on. He will. We serve a but God, don't we? <laughs> I heard her say, but God, but God. I think, you know what? If we could all experience a but God moment in our life, we would never go back to what we used to be. Come on, somebody. I believe there's miracles all in this house tonight. I believe things are about to unwind for some people. I feel this in my spirit tonight that weeping may endure for a night, but joy. Not the kind of joy your mom or dad gives you, but the kind of joy that the world didn't give and the world can't take away. Joy to help you sleep right. Come on, somebody. Joy to help you walk right. I, I just, I've heard this song before. This is a brand new song for us. And if we mess up, it's for his glory, not mine. So uh, I heard this song on the radio, and I've been playing it in my office while I've been praying. And it's just a simple song. And. I begin to think about the goodness of God and what the name Jesus really means to me. You know, a lot of people, Jesus means Savior. A lot of people, you know, Jesus means Redeemer. But to me, he's just my best friend. When I was all alone, had no one to talk to, and I felt like I was the last person on this earth, Jesus reminded me that I was still loved, I still had purpose, and I still had a job to do for the kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I think sometimes he's a reminder, too. Come on, somebody. He'll remind you of your calling and your purpose. Amen. So I'm going to sing this song tonight. I'm gonna, I may mess it up. I don't think I will, but we'll try. Amen. It goes like this. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. So oh, hallelujah. My word. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Come on. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Why? Because your name is power. Come on. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. depression oh I speak Jesus your name is power your name is healing your name 
his life. Do you believe that to be true? Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Sing, your name is power. Yes, your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. I like this. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. Sing it again. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. I speak Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Sing it one more time. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. I declare this. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. My mind can't fathom physically how I think about the story of Lazarus. I don't know why I'm going this way, but I think about the story of Lazarus. The Bible says he was dead for four days. He began to stink. Jesus went to the sisters and he said, where have you laid him? I don't care that he stinks. I just know he's dead and I come to do a miracle. I can just see them as they roll the stone away and as Jesus gets ready, he prays first. If you read your Bible correctly, he didn't just call him out of the grave. He actually prayed to his father first. He said, Father, I thank you that you hear me. I thank you that those around me can see you inside of me doing the miracle. And I can just picture how the voice of Jesus called out to Lazarus. And I've preached on this before, and it may make sense to some and may not to others. But I thought about the sound waves of the master, how he called out to Lazarus, and how those voice waves echoed through that tunnel to that cave, and it met him right at Lazarus' ear. And the moment he called out Lazarus, something snapped inside of Lazarus. His soul became back to life because the master had called him. It wasn't because his mama called him or because his daddy called him or because the friends called him. But when the name of Jesus is spoken into somebody's life, that name of Jesus brings power. That name of Jesus brings healing. And the name of Jesus brings resurrection. So I don't know what kind of dead, oh my God, help me, Lord. I don't know what kind of dead situation you're staying around, but I guarantee if you speak the name of Jesus, everything has to change for the better. I said at the name of Jesus, demons tremble. At the name of Jesus, lives are turned around. At the name of Jesus, callings are restored because there's nobody. I said there's nobody like the name of Jesus tonight. If you got dead family members in your area, call out Jesus to them. If your anointing feels dead, your calling feels stuck up and dead, speak to that anointing, tell it to wake up. Speak Jesus to everything you see. The power of life and death, my friend, is in your tongue. What are you killing and what are you calling to life tonight? Tonight I speak the only name I know to speak. 
It's not Donald Trump. It's not Joe Biden. It's not just an old me. It's not Sean. It's not me. It's the name of Jesus. He said, no other name was given under heaven, but we must be saved. But the name of Jesus. So I'm going to say it like this. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Listen, it's Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. You know why? Because that name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. My Lord. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. Because I want more of you, God. Come on, say it. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. Because I want more of you, God. I got to have more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. Cause I want more of you, God. Say, I want more, 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 I want more of you, God. I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more. I want more, I want more, I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't, come on. I want more, yes. Set a fire, set a fire down. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Father, right now I come before you tonight, Father, and I pray over these people. I pray a special blessing over every calling, over every anointing in this room tonight, God. For the ones that have let their banner down, the ones that dropped their shield, the one that's dropped their sword, the one that feels like it's not worth going home anymore, my house. Father, I call life to that anointing. I call life to that speaking right now, God. I call life to that soul, God, that feels like throwing in the towel. And God, you said we were made more conquerors through your son Jesus tonight, Father. So let everything we do, let everything we set our hands to do be for the glory of God. For it's not that we're man pleasers. It's not that we're mom and daddy pleasers. But God, let us please you in everything that we say. Everything that we do. Lord, restore visions tonight. Lord, the ones that lost their vision 20 years ago. God, I pray for supernatural. Oh, blinders to be taken off tonight, God. And that the Holy Ghost of God would set a fire from the top of our head to the soles of their feet tonight, Father. For it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your Spirit tonight. And we cry, have a Father. We cry, have a Father tonight, God, knowing that you're more than able and you're willing to help in the time of need tonight. Woo! Work it out, Father. Work it out, Father. Work it out for the good tonight, God. For 
for it's not by might, nor by power, but by the Holy Ghost, the kind of glory of God. Oh, let it fall tonight, God. Oh, raise your hands on the sanctuary. There's a flood about to move in. I said there's a flood about to move in. You didn't come here by accident. There's about to be a flood in this sanctuary tonight. Step in the flood. Step in it tonight. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't get my God. Hey, I want more of you, God. I sing it out. Oh, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. I want more. I want more. Come on. I want more. I want more, I want more, I want more of you, God. I gotta have more of you, God. I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more of you. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. Yes, I one more time sing tonight. Oh, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. Just lift your hands all in the house tonight. How many knows God's a ever present need of help tonight? It doesn't matter what you walked in with, 
what the assignment of the enemy is. David said he's my ever-present need of help. I'm thankful that there is a positioning change of the head right now. There's some of us that's been looking down in shame. Some of us haven't been able to lift our heads. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying there's a lifting of the head moment. I believe right now that if you will just call him up, I wish somebody just say Jesus right now. Jesus. Whatever's coming against you, just say Jesus. Jesus. It might look like it's impossible. Just say Jesus. If you know what he was saying, that name is powerful. That name walls have to fall. Depression has to flee. I wish somebody one more time say, I want more, Lord. One more time say. tonight to see what God has in store in the word tonight Hallelujah. somebody look at your neighbor and say get ready. get ready I know you hear me say that a lot of times T.D. Jakes made it famous but I do feel in my spirit that there is a moment that the church needs to get ready how many knows the church needs a spirit of expectation more now than ever yeah. you know it's one thing to come to church and do the check Box, but I believe tonight I'm not in a house full of people just hitting a check box. I believe I'm in a house tonight that's needing a moment with God tonight. And how many knows that you can't get your moment by with anybody else? You have to get that moment when you get desperate enough for God's touch that it doesn't matter who's around. This is my moment. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, this is my moment. They may not want to go deep, but God, I got to go deep tonight. How many knows the word said deep, call unto deep, and iron sharpens iron. See, not everybody in the room will be ready to go as deep as you will, but how many knows you can't go deeper than where God has already been? I'm thankful to know that God's been somewhere that the preacher ain't been. God's been somewhere that the best intercessor hasn't touched yet. But I'm thankful to know that John 17 said, but I had the best prayer warrior ever pray a prayer over my life. That when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, he began to pray for you and I. And how many is thankful to know that most of us on our way to our place of death, we'd be asking God all the reasons why we're going. But Jesus said, Father, if they be one as we are that the glory may manifest and I'm thankful to know that now that I know that he loves me he saved me washed me in the blood filled me with the Holy Ghost there's glory inside of you that exposes every attack of the enemy I came to tell somebody that the flesh cannot be glorified in the present see but I believe there's a moment tonight that flesh had to go out the door I wish somebody said my flesh had to stay at the door there comes a moment that you got to say this is my moment come hell or high water I might got some mindsets that has got me beat up and messed up but the Bible said for the flesh wrestled, wrestled after the spirit that they cannot coincide with one another and I tell you you can't be lukewarm and expect to get set on fire you got to make up your mind and say I'm done with just being lukewarm I'm either going to turn me all the way up or turn me all the way off but I came tonight to to tell somebody if you let your flesh die at the altar tonight you're about to get an encounter with God that hell itself is getting nervous because I believe there's some chain breaking power in the house tonight there's something that might have killed your mama daddy grandmama whatever there is but I came to say but it ended with you and if you know that to be true I wish somebody say yeah if you're saying God whatever you got to cut off yes God I may not know how I'm going to do it but you got my yes and how many is thankful to know all God says is just say yes the enemy overcomplicates it but God just say, says say yes I believe there's an assignment in the house tonight 
I tell you, I was talking with Pastor Hunter in the office before service, and I think we had church before church. We got to talking a little bit about this message, and he was studying in Psalms, and we got to talking. How many knows it's good to encourage one another? We need to talk about the Word. And, man, I tell you, I felt the Holy Ghost goosebumps before we even got up here, and I said, oh, my goodness, they're in trouble on a Thursday night. But I do believe there's an urgency in the house tonight. And I come to you with a a pure heart, no other motive, just that God may be the glory out of all of it. That you don't see the speaker, but see the Lord. Amen. Come on now. We're just a vessel. If you allow me a few moments of your time, I ain't going to hold you up. I'm going to get right to the point in what God has. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. And if you would, stand for the reading of God's word tonight. How many said, Lord, I got an expectation that is burning in my tummy, that I feel it rolling, that tongues couldn't fix it, Pepto didn't seize it. But when I cried holy, the river broke. Come on now. that You don't need Pepto or tums. You need a Holy Ghost, let it go kind of moment. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. It said, trust. Let your neighbor say trust. trust. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not on your own understanding. That's the hard part. Lean not on your own understanding. In all thy ways, somebody say all. all. Acknowledge him. Let your neighbor say acknowledge him tonight. And he shall, somebody said shall, shall direct thy path. Father, I want to thank you for the word tonight. I thank you, God, that they see not the speaker, God, or the man. But, God, we call upon your name one more time, God, that you have graced us for the opportunity with breath in our body, God. God, that they see not the speaker nor the man, God, but let them see the cross and the wage in which the cross won the victory. God, I thank you for resurrection power that is in this house, that lives are being changed right now in your presence, God. God, we praise you in advance for what you're going to do. God, I pray that you anoint the speaker, anoint the listener, God that they may hear and come into clarity and understanding of the assignment and the hour in which you're calling the people. God, I thank you for a fresh anointing that breaks every yoke, God, and we give you glory and honor, and everybody said amen, and you may be seated. When I began to pray this week, I heard the Lord very, 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 very clear on what to do tonight and what God is speaking. And for most of us that was here Sunday morning, Sunday night, it was off the chain. Come on now. God moved in a mighty way. He did some things. The Lord told us we got to get off the boat and we got to start walking on some water. And a lot of times we all know and hear the stories of how we have faith and how there's hope in taking a step that faith without works is dead. But a lot of times in the church, something that we do not hear about is trust. We don't hear much about trust. If the fact of the nature, if we would have to dissect this dialogue and content and talking to one another, most of us sitting in the house tonight can some way or some fashion fashion say, I deal with. With some trust issues. Come on. How many is willing to say, can I get a witness? I'll say, come on. At some way or fashion, we find our all of us saying that there is something in your life that has caused a trust issue. And as I begin to pray about this, God began to say, Justin, I don't believe it's a faith problem in the church. There's a trust problem in the church. See, When I began to think and I was talking with Pastor Hunter, it said in James that a double-minded man 
is unstable in all of his ways. And, and I got thinking a lot of times we, we reference that with cardinality. And, my, and let me tell you, the Bible said that a cardinal mind is an enemy against God and it results in death. But I begin to think about being double-minded and it begin to speak simply to my soul that when there's a double mind, there means there's some faith in the mind because if I, if I was just fully sold into the world, then my mind wouldn't be double. I would just be lost in the world without no faith and without no hope. But I believe what James was talking about is that half your mind had faith, but the other half didn't have trust to see it all the way through. And I know some of you are looking at me like I'm crazy, but a lot of us can say, God, I have faith. You can move mountains, but not enough trust to step out in water and keep on moving though you don't see it. Let me tell you, I came to tell somebody your faith has got to activate with some trust. How many knows that if you ain't got trust, it don't matter how many times you try to wine and dine it. Come on. It don't matter how many times you take somebody out on a day. How many times you hold their hand. If there ain't no trust in the relationship, the relationship ain't going nowhere. Because in the back of your mind, you're always thinking, I bet they're doing me wrong. I'm just, and a lot of us are treating God like our dating life. Lord, I'll hold your hand in worship. I'll raise my hands and act like we're dating good. I'll kiss you in front of everybody. We'll ride in the car and put it together. But in the back of my mind, God, I don't trust you like I said I did. Because how many knows that when you trust God with all your mind and all your heart, there ain't no room for the devil to get up in your Kool-Aid. Because I trust him. I've been somewhere with him. I sank one time before and he met me when I said help and he picked me right up. I wish somebody testify that God's a good God. That even when I lost my focus, when I called him up, he reached down and he picked me back up and I wish somebody give him a good God praise on Thursday if you know the kind of grace I'm talking about. But I begin to pray and when we understand in this scripture what he's telling us, he's saying, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. He doesn't just tell us to trust him. He says you can't lean on what you think it is. And how many knows that we catch ourselves in our prayer life praying what we think it is? Okay. I'll be honest with you. Sometimes you can be dead set some some way, and you just be praying to God. And how many know sometimes that ain't what it is, and you giving the devil play in your prayer closet? I don't know why I came to rip a Band-Aid off, but let me tell you, when you trust God, you ain't got to talk about it no more. You just say, God, I ain't even going to mention it because how many of those life or death comes out of your mouth? You keep on talking about it long enough, that's why it's still lingering around. When you're done talking about it, when you really trust God, guess what? You don't talk about it no more. You put that thing on the altar. I said, I trust God. Everybody else said, hey, it ain't going to work, but if you knew the kind of God I know, it might be four days late, but it's going to show up right on time. You might have put the grave and put me up and put the grave clothes on. But I came to tell somebody, thank God, he's a grave loosing kind of clothes. Whatever they tried to put on you, God will say, loose them and let them go. How many knows that when God gets the glory, he'll let your enemy unbag the baggage they put on you. I came to speak in the atmosphere. There have been some people put some stuff on you God never meant to put on you. They put some torment in your mind. They put some mindsets on your mind. That wasn't God that put that on you. You, that was the devil himself because he knew there was coming a day four days later but Martha gave up but I came to tell you but he said Martha I am the resurrection and the life if you'll trust me today I'll say Lazarus come on out that grave and just sit back all you that put him in the grave go ahead and take all them clothes off how many of those the enemy's just doing double work today because all the hell and time they took to put it on you God's going to make them come back around again to take it off of you. I'm thankful to know that when he said I set a table, he didn't set a table in all the data boys and that you're going to make it. He'll set it in all the ones that said you ain't going to go nowhere. You ain't no good busted up and messed up. I don't know why they like you. I don't even know they want to talk about you, but how many knows that he said I am the apple of his eye. I was fearfully and wonderfully made. What you did not accept, God justified and glorified. What you thought was 
wasn't going to make it. God planted it in a seed that when he got the glory out of this thing, there was evidence that said, but I trust him tonight. I wish somebody say, I trust you even in the waiting. I trust you in the grave. I'll trust you while I'm beat. I was why there's a lifter of the moment and I wish somebody say yes. But he said we can't lean on our own understanding because I'm mean, in those when we're in a grave we can find ourselves having a little pity party. I, I, am I talking to you tonight? Don't hurt me, you know. But we can find ourselves having a pity party. <laughs> we find ourselves whining about it, whining and dining. Come on now, you ain't got to whine and dine, God. Come on, you can just give him a good God praise and then inhabit your praise. <laughs> And I tell you, I know he hears my cries, but if you want an inhabitation, invite God in your problem, you need to learn to praise him on credit. There's a lot of us saying, Lord, I can't wait until you break the train, break the chain. I'm just going to go ahead and cry about it right now. But I wish somebody know there's power in a Shabbat. You know what a Shabbat is? That's when you give him a shout, because how many knows when you shout, walls got to come down. And I'm here to tell you, the church has lost the effectiveness of a shout. But when you shout and there's an anointing behind it, the Strongholds got to come down. When you shout and it's been somewhere, Jericho ain't got a shot in hell. And I wish somebody say, my shout just ain't a little feel-good shout. My shout's bringing the whole thing down. And I wish somebody give him a shout on credit. But you got to understand. Somebody say, you better understand this real quick. Tap your neighbor if they ain't listening and say, you better understand this real quick. Because there's a lot of us been beating your head up against the wall wondering if God's going to meet. I'm here to tell you, don't miss your moment tonight. And I tell you, I know it might have been like hell all week trying to get here. Some of you fought like cats and dogs before you even walked in the room. Some of you might have got a bad report before you walked in here. Can I tell you, that don't mean that the devil's on the run. That means you're on the threshing floor kind of moment. Because how many know? when Boaz, when Ruth laid at Boaz's feet when it came to harvest time, he had to stomp on the grain because how many knows you got to crush it before it can go through? Why? Because you got to separate what's good and bad because the wheat and the shaft grow together. But when you stomp it out, the grain, oh, somebody better know, grain brings seed, shaft brings disaster. And I wish somebody say what you were crushing was just producing seed because I'm about to walk through a threshing floor because why I trusted him and I acknowledged him. When he said lay down at Boaz's feet, I lay down at Boaz's feet and I wish somebody say I ain't got to be the head. I'll just lay at his feet. I wish somebody say I'll trust you even at the feet. Oh, uh, y'all better get right up in here. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost. Everybody know Naomi a little bit older. I don't even know why I'm going to the roof, but we'll flow. <laughs> Naomi was a little bit older, and she done left Moab. And how many of those Moab was the land of destruction? Ruth wasn't from Moab, wasn't from Bethlehem. She was a Moab. But guess what? She was married into the kingdom. But how many of those all the men died, and they had no redemption? But Boaz was a redemption of the family. She was cleaning the field and getting scrap. But Boaz said, that woman just keeps on following me. Go ahead and leave her a little bit more. You might have walked the field clean and barely getting scrapped, but your man that's the redeemer of the kingsman has noticed you working in the field. He said it just wanted to get a touch of it. And how many knows he started leaving a little bit more behind? Because guess what? If you'll just keep on following the kingsman, he'll redeem the family. It might look like it's crazy, but I trust you even in the way. Because if I can just touch a little bit of the harvest, that's all it's got to take. And I wish somebody say, I'm not just gleaning for nothing. I'm gleaning after the one that's about to set it off. I wish somebody say, God's about to set it off. But she was gleaning. That means she was working. I want you to understand, she hadn't even been redeemed yet. But she was working in the field. Because how many know, if you know what's in front of you, you don't got to have them tell you yet. I'm going to work so when he turns behind me, I'm right in position. A lot of people are waiting to be told they're in position. But I wish there was some gleaning mamas and daddies in here that said, I'm walking behind him. So when he turns around, my family is going to get a little bit of the pie. And I wish somebody say, pour it on on me, God. Uh, 
she was gleaning because she was trusting. Let me tell you, most of us not. Let, I got to tell you the story now. So the pair, uh, the the husbands had died, and how many of those you got? You got, you got Ruth, you got Naomi, and you got oh Oprah or yeah Oprah. Ooper, yeah. Yeah, let me tell you, I, let me tell you, I'm going off memory right now. <laughs> but how many knows that? Naomi said, go on back. I ain't got nothing to give you. But what did Ruth say? She said, where you go, I go. Where you die, I die. How many know sometimes you always got some oopas in your life that after they done raised and got all they can get out of you, they went. And they kissed them goodbye, and you never heard any more about them. But Ruth said there was something on Naomi that nobody else saw. And if you go to Bethlehem, I'm on my way to Bethlehem. Because how many know that meant it was to land the bread? The famine was over. You're going somewhere that's about to meet my knee. Because it wasn't just a man. There was bread on the way. And how many knows that it's the bread of life? The leaven was broke by Jesus. That was representation that the famine was over. Because Jesus broke the land of the distraction and all you got to do is say you're my ride or die cause I trust you and in a moment of a twinkling of an eye you may go from gleaning to sitting at the feet and I wish somebody say I'm on my way to the promise tonight Oprah Oprah yeah how many of us are like Oprah up in there I know I'm probably killing it y'all can laugh y'all know how I am how many of those most of us are like that? I'll ride with you as long as it's good. Come on. I'll ride with you as long as there's a chance that I can get something out of it. And how many of those Naomi said, I'm so old now, even if I get married again, I can't provide you no husband. And Upra, and how many of those most of us women, when it comes uh, women up in here, when you can't give me no husband, I'm out. I'm going to go look up in the bar, apple bottom jeans. Come on, girl. But how many of those, if you want your Boaz, you got to work in the field. I'm tired of hearing women cry about all this man. Well, you shouldn't have kissed it goodbye and went back out in the club. You got to stay your hind in in the pew and say, I'm about to find my man Jesus and a man made after his image. At the lights bearing witness that he's been somewhere with God. Come on, men. You can find you a good one, too. Don't kiss it goodbye because it didn't work out the way you thought it did. Don't settle for nobody's junk because there's a field and a harvest just for you. When you say, I'm going where you're going, and somebody say, I'm going tonight. Let you ever say, this is my moment. I ain't going to be able to preach off now. Let your neighbor say, this is my moment. I don't know. The Holy Ghost just changed my whole sermon, so I don't even know who I'm talking to tonight. But I'm talking to somebody. Come on now. How many of those? Oh, you're talking to me. He's talking to me tonight. How many of those that we can all find ourselves like that when we feel like, Lord, there ain't nothing else for me to have? I've wasted it. Everybody's dead. The one I thought was going to take care of me. But how many of those don't lose hope yet? Keep on trusting in God. Because just like Ruth found Boaz, we got something better than Boaz. We got something better than Ruth. And his name was Emmanuel, wonderful counselor. His name is Jesus, that he met you in your Moab. And you got to make your mind up and said, Jesus, I'll follow you even if you call me out of my land that I've been comfortable in. Because how many knows that you got to die to flare? Because the Bible said, though I live, Christ lives through me. Yeah, I might be weak and I might got mine proper. But the Bible said, I got a sound mind through Christ Jesus with power and love of Jesus Christ. I might be weak but I trust you that the Bible said let the weak say they are strong I might not be able to make it but the Bible said I can do all things through Christ which he is the one that strengthens in me the Egyptian might be on my heel but Exodus said for the Egyptian you see today you shall see no more for the salvation of the Lord is here don't let a red sea deter you don't let the field discourage you I was in a moment of an eye with a lifting of the staff God will take what you you thought was your way out to show you that God is still able but you got to trust him in the waiting. Faith's got to meet trust and when faith meets trust you start binding mountains out of the way. That's why it said faith the grain of a mustard seed can tell that mountain to get out your way because if you got a little bit of faith but a whole lot of trust you can tell some stuff to get out your way and I wish somebody say get out my way tonight. There's something that I got to touch. There's something I need from God. But are you hungry?
hungry enough to say yes up in this house. Oh, I ain't come to some hungry people. I wish somebody get desperate enough like you've been gossiping about. I wish somebody get desperate enough like you've been putting prayer requests in and know that the comforter's here tonight. And if you call him up, he might just break the chain and hell might run off your life. I wish somebody say, it's my moment tonight. Somebody tap your neighbor and say, it's my moment tonight. I came to tell you, I know that the, the Bible says that the enemy fights us. But I know my Bible said, for this is not my battle to fight. That this is God's battle. And just like he told them in 2 Chronicles, he said in 24 hours that the army that you see, God's about to take them out. Why did the enemy fight you the hardest today? Because that devil's been numbered. God said tomorrow he won't be there. Because why? This is the day that the Lord has made and I I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will somebody say weeping and dirt for the night, but my joy is showed up on time. And I will somebody say glory. glory. <laughs> somebody look at your neighbor and say, I trust him tonight. He said, the understanding. That's where the enemy gets us in the thinking game analytical people up in here. We naturally problem solvers and analytical. <laughs> we like to analyze everything. I got to make sure, do I look good before I leave? Come on, ladies. <laughs> do my arms look big? Come on, Sean. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I love you. Come on, to Morgan over here. Oh, I wonder if the pews are straight. Come on, we all analytical. Is it going to look good? Hey, we all overanalyzing. And how many knows why you're overanalyzing? If you would have just submitted, God would have moved it already. Stop trying to contemplate your breakthrough. Stop trying to think how God's going to do it. Just say, I trust you, God. However you do it, you do it. God, don't let me put my two cents in it. Because how many knows you can hinder God trying to work the plan out? I wish somebody really say, I trust you and say here it is God cause why I trust you enough to say I'm done trying to work it out my Costco list didn't do it right I had to send her back to pick the groceries up come on man it was a simple list but how many know there's always an error as long as you're in it but when you put God in it he will never fail you but you gotta say I trust you enough God that I didn't put a bulletin list I wrote a vision oh y'all ain't listening I think some of us got bulletin points and vision confused. <laughs> I don't tell you. Let me tell you, bulletins are note taking vision somewhere you saw. Come on. You can write bulletin points down all day long, but when you get a vision of it, it is something different. Come on, now don't treat God like a note taker. Go somewhere with God. As how many of those Habakkuk said, I went up and I stayed until I heard him. And then when he said, when you come down, write down what God showed you so he that read it can run with it because we without vision shall perish. But if nobody's willing to go up and trust God, then there ain't no vision coming down from God. And that's why the church is in the hell it's in we don't need more ta note taking we need more vision and preparation hungry praying trusting God saying move and somebody better say I need him to move but we have to acknowledge him in all that way we've addressed trust and understanding right the understanding for God's ways are not our ways his thoughts are not my thoughts. As the heavens are above the earth, so is his thoughts, and so are his ways. And I tell you, you can't put God, put your finger on God. God is so magnificent and deep. Right when you think you got him, he shows you you really don't got him. You got to go up a little higher. What happens? Some of us get somewhere with God, get a little goosebump, Holy Ghost feel, and you've been in the same position for 20 years. But I wish I hear some people saying, I'm done sitting where God left me 20 years. I got to go a little bit higher. There's a vision that God's given, and I need to ride it, and I need to run with it because why? your family is at stake but it's your moment but are you willing to trust him tonight
and acknowledge. You got to acknowledge him in all that ways. <laughs> He's like, you got to trust me when you messed up. You got to trust me when you're depressed. It's easy to trust him in a good, feel-good service. But what about when you go home and your mind's running rapid? You know, I believe God's a delivering God, but I'm going to talk real for a minute with you. Is odd if I talk real for a minute? Because I think some people need to hear this tonight. People think because you go to an altar and you give God something, you walk out of this thing and it never bothers you. Again, the devil is a liar. You have to choose every day and acknowledge him in that, that I trust you what happened on that altar, it happened. And I believe I talked to some real people that really gave some stuff to God, but the mindset was still there. And you got to wake up in the morning and choose that I trust you, God. Though that mind is worn and fighting me like hell, though I want to run and what I thought I had an encounter only to hear some religious donkey person say you never got a touch from God. Sit on down, devil. You're a hindrance stone. I trust you and I acknowledge it. The fact that I got something is the fact I'm still moving. Because if I'd have never touched it, I'd have just sat down and died. But the fact that I'm moving means resurrection's on the way. Don't let your enemy bury you in what God's about to show off in. I wish somebody say God's about to show off tonight. But there's help. I know we dress and acknowledge it because let me tell you, the Bible said that the works are tried by fire. Now, I believe in total deliverance. I've seen God do it. I've seen God break drug addictions. I've seen him break mindsets. I've seen him do it, pow, in an instant. He done it for me. He can do it for you. But there's things I had to fight that God didn't instantly deliver off me. There were some mindsets that I still battle with. That's right. You still battle. I still battle. And you still battle. Let's get real where we can keep on moving with Jesus. All right. Some of us, I know some of us, we can do this and this and cut somebody out the next moment. Guess what? You're still battling. it. Some of us want to act like we all Holy Ghost filled and we are and praise God for it. But you got an attitude problem because why? We're still battling. But what am I doing? I acknowledge you, God. I trust you that it said, be ye separate as I am. Though I can't do it, God the cross already did it. And that's why we got to be thankful for the blood. And is there any saints in the house tonight that said, I'm thankful for the blood tonight? But we have to acknowledge him in all of our ways. And then he said, I shall direct them. As how many knows it said, for the word is a foot lamp under thy path. The word will direct you. And how many knows that? John chapter 1, about the 14th verse, if I'm not mistaken, it said, And the word was made flesh that dwelt among us, full of grace and full of truth, and we beheld his glory. Come on, somebody. How many knows that's Jesus? Jesus' eternal name is what? The word. How could David say there was a footland? Because Jesus said, I am the light. Come on, somebody. He was saying there would be a light shine in the darkness. Because why? Jesus said, Where I am, there is light. And I tell you, if there's darkness, that means light is all also in the room and I wish somebody said I might have been in some dark places but there was a shadow that let me know there was light still there and I acknowledged him in the darkness but I saw the light of the shadow that said but God didn't leave me to die in the darkness but was carrying me on to the other side and I trust you even in the valley Amen. I'm going to keep on fighting tonight we're going to break it But God does have relief. Look at your neighbor and say, relief. Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it said, There had no temp temptation taken you but such as common to a man. But God is faithful. There it is. Look at your neighbor and say, God's faithful tonight. He said he's faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. How many is thankful to know that God knows how much you can really take? Come on. A lot of us are like, I can't handle a paper cup, but God knows you're stronger than what you think you are. Come on. How many is thankful to know God saw something in you that you don't? even see yeah yeah come on he said that you are able he said but with the temptation he also makes a way of escape God has already made you a way of escape out of where you're at tonight and I wish somebody give him a good God praise that is made an escape but in the middle of an escape God will never escape you out of something that he's calling you out of uh oh why does God sometimes allow us to sit there because you ain't trusting the way you need to yet? 
You ain't laid it all down yet. You ain't broke yet like you need to bro. How many knows for God to give you a breakthrough, there's got to be a break before you can go through Everybody cries breakthrough, but are you willing to break so it can come through? Everybody wants the escape, but are you willing to break all the way where you need the escape? God, I'm going to preach tonight. Let me tell you, there is escape power. You just ain't broke all the way yet. You still got some of that mess you ain't willing to give up yet. But when you finally say to hell with this, God, I am moving forward with Jesus. He will bring you on the other side, and it will never come back again. Like Sister Faye saying that song, never, 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 never. Somebody let you on ever say, it ain't never coming back again tonight. But in that, this is your moment. You have to trust him. He will make an escape. Isaiah 43, 19 says, Behold, behold, I will do a new thing. I mean, it's thing when God does something, he doesn't do an old thing. He does a new thing. Oh, I'm thankful for the new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers and the desert. How many say, know what God's doing in you? He's getting ready to do something you ain't never seen before. Your friends ain't even seen the like about what you're about to do tonight. Come on now. But do you trust them enough? Because, listen, I want you to understand it said that there was a spring. I preach on this all the time. To have a spring means there had to be pressure. He said it shall spring forth. You know what that means? He had to push you all the way down. How many of those Peter said that? Under the mighty hand of God shall exalt thee. He's referencing Isaiah. Because when the hand of God pushes you, he don't leave you down. But when he releases, you pop. You ever been on a pogo stick when you're jumping? The harder you push down and jump, the higher the what? Fly. There have been a lot of people been jumping on you, punching on you, talking about you. Messing with you. Guess what all they've been doing? They're getting ready for my pogo moment. Come on now. How many of those have the devil known he was just winding you up? Oh, y'all better get right. Some of y'all being funny about it, but how many of those, that's how your life feels? I wake up in the morning, here's the devil. He's on my shoulder. He's beating me down. But how many knows he's just getting my spring ready? He's lubing me up. Because why? Because God said, when I cast my care on he that careth for me, he moves that devil out the way and hand of God moves on the spring. And you go somewhere that the devil can't go. And I wish somebody say, I'm about to take my seat in glory. That every spiritual blessing sitting in a heavenly place. But are you trusting him enough tonight that though you've been trampled on and though you've been pogoed on, sprung on, but God said, I'm about to break it off of you and you're about to elevate somewhere that if they'd have known what the pressure was producing, they'd have just let you bounce around like Tigger. But I'm thankful to know I'm going somewhere that eyes have not seen nor ears have heard, but I trust you enough that you're doing something. Somebody say he's doing something tonight. (laughs) But are you willing to handle the pressure? Are you willing to handle the pressure? Let me tell you, that's where the enemy gets us, the pressure. If you know how wine's made, there has to be pressure to make wine. If you know the anointing oil, it had to be pushed. The olive had to be broke to get the product of the oil. Let me tell you, you can't be an olive and expect to have oil. You got to bust it so the oil can come out, see? But we don't want no pressure. That's why there ain't no anointing because the church don't know how to handle pressure. If the church ever knew how to handle trust pressure and trust God, inflation wouldn't have you messed up. Come on, somebody. The way this world looks wouldn't get you messed up because why? The pressure that broke everybody else was just producing the oil that will light it up when the midnight hour comes. I don't know about you. I want to be part of the five, not the messed up five. I want to hear that thing chime and say, I don't got to run to the store to get some oil. I've been under pressure ever since I got saved. Come on now. I may want to be honest. I'll tell you honest to you. It wasn't easy. It was the best decision and the hardest decision I ever made. Yeah, I come out of some stuff, but I've been under pressure. Come on now. How many knows that? I used to not have to war and have a conscience what was right or wrong. I could do whatever I want, and I felt real good with it. Now I'm under pressure because why? There's something in you that's longing after you that says if you'll trust me and acknowledge you, I promise you there's a peace above all your understanding that will surpass every naysayer, hater, sayer, whatever it might 
might be. If you give it to God tonight, he'll elevate you somewhere that that mindset won't mess with you no more. But as long as you like thinking about it and entertaining it, it ain't the devil keeping you there. It's between your own two eyes. But when you say, God, I hear the pressure, but I showed up tonight to be elevated. Somebody say, I'm elevating. Let your neighbor say, don't get discouraged. You're coming out of this tonight. Psalms 23, verse 1 and 6 says, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me. Come on, somebody. It ain't just anybody leading you. He is leading me. Come, that, that ought to preach all by itself. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, he's leading me. Come on, somebody grab somebody and say, he's leading us. This ain't, this ain't statistics. This ain't your mama, your granddaddy. Somebody say, he is leading me. Because why? When he begins to lead you, come on, when it transitions from just the shepherd moment to he that leadeth me, we understand he's a restorer of my soul. Come on now. How many knows if you never lead him, if you never let him lead you, there's no restoring. Oh my God. Some of us are wondering, God, I wish you would have restored my soul by now. How about you let him lead you by now? Come on now. Let me tell of us like a stubborn donkey. I like that. You ever try to halt the reins uh, uh, a donkey or a horse sometimes that they stubborn? I don't care how strong you are. That horse some of us like, God, I need to go somewhere. I want, I'm barn sour. Come on. Too much sweet feed on you. all floundered out. If anybody knows horses, you know what I'm talking about. But some of us, we ain't good. We don't allow God to halter us just right. But if you just submit, you'll find that he's leading you to a trough. He's leading you to a trough. We're fighting the one trying to lead us to the water. Because we're barn sour. If you're barn sour, you don't want to come out of the barn. Because you expect the water to be brought to you in a little bucket. But if you'll ever come out of the barn, you can actually go to the pond. And there's an endless supply of the water. But the enemy's got you so messed up thinking that's the best it can be. And all you're getting is a bucket at a time of water. And when he says you can drink, and I tell you, you can drink all you want if you let him pull you out of the barn. But are you willing to let God pull you out of the barn? <laughs> because when you allow him to pull you out of the barn, he restores my soul. And he leads me in the patches, path of righteousness <laughs> for his name's sake. Now listen to this. Yea, though I walk through a valley. Ain't that about something God restores you? He restores the path of righteous, but I'm in the valley. Because how many knows there's got to be a light in the valley, and how many knows there's a light in you? God trusts you enough to walk somewhere where there was only darkness, but you were the light. Because when you shadow something, that means it's not you they see. They see the glory on you. My God, that's why the enemy had to fight you. Don't be mad about the valley. You got the glory on you because where you go, you bring shadows. Come on, talk about Peter. Is there anybody willing to say, God, I'll be a shadow in the middle of their death because why? Where, I, where you are, there is life. But you got to make your mind up and have a moment and say, I trust you, even though you led me to a valley. Because why? There's glory that lives in you. And there can't be darkness where there is light. Mm. I'm trying to stay good. And I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare a table. Somebody say, I'm going to my table tonight. Before me in the presence of my enemies, thou anointed my head with oil, and my cup run it over. There's a running over moment. You won't ever have to want again. I'm, I, I feel that I'm, listen, God is able to do anything. We heard how God sent checks in the mail. Let me tell you, if you'll trust God with a little, he'll break it and feed a multitude. Uh, 
It ain't always monetary, but I promise you, if you give God all you got, God will show you all what he's got, and it's an overflow. Come on, somebody. Some of us need an overflow, but are you willing to give God what you got and say, I trust you, Lord, because how many knows that if you give it to God, he'll exceed it abundantly through the power that worketh through Christ. So if the man sows, so if the man reaps. Trying to turn this into a tide mess. Let's go. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed with a great cloud of a witness, let us lay aside every way and sin which do easily beset us. And let us run. Somebody say run. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus. Let you never say, don't lose your focus now. You've come too far to look back. You know what else? I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Somebody say, I wouldn't take nothing for it. I wouldn't go back to the bar for it. I wouldn't go back to lend on my mind for it. But I'm going to keep on looking. Looking unto Jesus. The author, he wrote my story and he finished my story of my faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the of Father. How many stand to know he's still sitting there today? This mess ain't moved him, but I can promise you there'll come a time. That when a trumpet sounds, he won't sit on the throne anymore. He'll be riding down on a white horse. And I wish somebody say, I'll be ready when the horse moment comes. There's a lot of us waiting for the rapture, but are you living like the rapture's coming now? Come on, come on now, somebody. You trust him enough that your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're going to be called up. So you might as well trust him right now. The one that called me up's already got it. Come on, somebody. Yep. Deuteronomy 33, 27 says, the eternal God is thy refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. And shall thrust out the enemy from before thee and shall say, destroy them. The everlasting arms. David said in Psalms 121 verse 1 and 3, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence my help come. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Look at Geneva and say, God ain't went to sleep on the job, and he ain't going to start now. God ain't sleeping. He's still been watching. Look at your neighbor and say, I might have missed it, but God didn't miss it. He knew every ill foul assignment on you. But he said, if you trust me, I ain't missed it. How many knows he's better than AT&T security system? He's better than any camera system. He's better than any find my iPhone or find my droid. Let me tell you, God will find you even in a pit of hell. David said on the farthest ends of the earth where the satellite couldn't reach and Verizon didn't even get service. God had service. Come on. When I went down to hell, he said, but God still had servant. How many is thankful to know that even in hell, God has still had servant? That the Holy Ghost in you, it doesn't need a tower or a satellite. It's got the blood and the Holy Ghost that when trust activates it, and I say, Jesus, help me. He said, I pinned my pinpoint down. I knew right where you were. I didn't take a wrong turn or a left turn. I didn't need Google assistance. I did not need math. I knew exactly where you were, and I met you right on time. How many is thankful to know that God did not go to sleep, and you've been sealed, and you've been marked for redemption, purchase good kind of thing. I'm thankful to know that even in my grave, it might be an unmarked grave, but there's something in that ground that God said, I marked it, that when I sound the alarm, it'll raise up out of the grave. Oh, y'all better be thankful for what you've been sealed with. Psalms 18, 29 and 36, and I'm winding it up. Start getting ready, Hunter. <clears throat> this is what I call scripture overload. For y'all that come to this church a lot, you know, I hit it hard for about 25 minutes of preaching, and then you're going to get about 30 verses just slung at you. Pow, pow, pow. It's, <laughs> it's like speed dating, but it's speed scripture. Get ready. You miss it. <laughs> if you ain't alert, you miss your date. Come on. <laughs> Eight verses. <laughs> <laughs> Psalms 18, 29 through 36. It said, for by thee 
I have run through a troop. And by my God, I have leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. Check that. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler. A buckler. Holds it all together. To those that what? Trust in him. Man. As for God, his ways is perfect. How many know that word in Greek? Is complete. God's ways are complete. That's why he knew my ending from my beginning. Because he was perfect. He was complete in the way he designed you and I. And I know the enemy wants us to feel there's some fault in there. And by the way, just sent in the curse of Adam. There was. But we... But Adam and Eve, they couldn't create because you were still made in his image. That means you're perfect in all the way. You just got to trust it. And when you call on that name Jesus, the completion happens. <clears throat> that the way God intended you to live, he restored it by the ways of the cross. The peace, the liberty, the victory. You know, man was never meant to work the ground of the earth. The Bible said that they spoke. You know, prior to Eve pulling Adam out of position, the animals couldn't even get a name until Adam said what they were. A tree wasn't a tree until Adam said, you're a tree. You know why? God said, for I have given dominion unto man. And how many of those God can't go back on his word that's why Jesus said, go prepare me a body. Because I'm about to speak some stuff on this earth. I'm about to bring heaven authority back to the earth. But in that moment, you can go from that earthly authority to a supernatural kingdom authority. And what is it? God's word has been tried. Because how many knows the cross couldn't hold him? The grave couldn't hold him. And he's coming back. And he said, I send you a comforter that the works I do, you'll do. And greater the word. But why are we not doing it? Because we don't trust him. I know we got faith. A lot of us got faith tonight, don't we? But do you trust him? Because his word's been tried. Can I tell you, his promise is good tonight. So you and everybody stand all in the house tonight. I mean, you can say, God, I need a moment tonight. But every head bowed, don't look around, just raise your hand. I mean, you can say, Lord, I need a moment tonight. I walked in.